This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, along with Emmy, the guard of the dojo, at her post, looking adorable. But dissuading intruders and learning the, the great art of double strike and trample. Emmy! Emmy, cleave! Ember, cleave! Okay, we're still working on it. But today we're playing a fan favorite deck that they can't get enough of and never cease to leave positive comments and feedback for. A deck that has done nothing but brought Magic players closer together and revealed the love that we all have for this game. Nobody whatsoever complains about this deck. It is. Demir Rogues! Yay! Oh boy, oh boy. Guys, Emmy! Demir Rogues! Isn't that awesome? You guys like Demir Rogues? You guys like it so much that you disliked it 5,000 times last time I played it. But I've got to do my due diligence. To make one thing clear, I like Rogues. Hating on people who play Rogues, you're hating on me. Maybe that's your maybe that's your plan. But I I actually enjoy playing rogues. It's just I hate playing against it. And the edict, the the mission of the channel to give you guys so many different options to have fun with in magic means that there are so many decks that aren't good against rogues that when you play them every day, when you have to play a new deck every day, and you have to find ways to beat rogues every day, oh Yes, it's frustrating. And almost as much as mono red, but not quite. I'm never going to shift the target from mono red. Don't worry. That's more of a that's more of a life calling. Rogues is a passing annoyance, a, a little nuisance that's going to be with us for a year or two tops. Some of you just heard a year or two and got really mad. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. But it's important to share what's going on with Rogues, because a few developments have taken place. In the Luris version of the deck, two cards have become very normal to be played. And whether you're going to battle Rogues, or whether you're going to play Rogues, you need to know these cards. The first one is Lull Mage's Domination. Lull Mage's Domination lets you take control of creatures with converted mana cost X, and of course, three less to cast if the target a creature whose controller has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So you can steal something with three or less for just three mana. You can also scale it up. You can steal a five drop for five mana, which is a pretty good mana to card ratio. The idea of Lull Mage's Domination is it is it's a pivot and an adjustment to the escape creatures that opponents play. Because rather than kill the Ox of Ghanas and send it back to the graveyard to escape again, or the Chainweb Arachnir, or the whatever, you can gain control of it with Lull Mage's Domination and beat the opponent to death with it, which is actually much more effective than trying to manage or kill it. And then, so, Lull Mage's Domination is particularly useful against Gruul and Mono Red, two decks that generally give the rogues deck a hard time so it makes the rogues deck a much better best of one deck after that the next card is of one mind look at that mind meld you want to try that ember she's asleep um but of one mind is one mana to draw two cards if you control a human and a non-human and rogues is good at that they have eight humans and they have eight non-humans, Merfolk, Wind Robber, Ruin Crab. And they have Luris, which can be a non-human and get back a human so that you can set up a turn where you play Luris, play Thieves Guild Enforcer from the graveyard, cast of one mind. And they also have Lull Mage's Domination, so they can steal a non-human, play a Thieves Guild Enforcer, cast of one mind. They also, this, this version of the deck in particular, has four Agadim's Awakenings so that you just never run out of card presence on the battlefield. You can use it for five to get back a human and a non-human, like a Soaring Thought Thief and a Rune Crab. And then you cast your of one mind. One mana draw two. Light up the stage showed us how good that is in aggro. Here we have yet again another creature deck that can be very aggressive that can just draw two cards for one mana. It's a proven formula to having a very strong deck in magic so excited to play with of one mind in the deck 
Those of you trying to beat this sucker, well, these adjustments make it much better against creature decks and make it a lot worse against control decks because you can mess with their board presence so that they don't get to cast this for cheap. They have to take a turn off to do it. It's a sorcery. You can play less creatures and their Lull Mage's domination doesn't have as many targets. So dust off your control shell. If you're an aggro deck trying to beat this, then recognize the power of one mind Maybe you need more removal spells, more scorching dragon fires to get their stuff permanently exiled. And remember that Lull Mage's domination is going to steal your Lovestruck Beast. So be ready for that too. Maybe you steal it back with the Akron War. I don't know. The win rate data coming out of the standard portion of the Zendikar Rising Championship put rogues, demure rogues, at 55% win rate, making it by win rate for that tournament, the best deck in standard. Is that true? Does it transfer to best of one? These are the things I want to find out. So let's dive in and let the of one mind lull maging dominating rogue most disliked video ever nonsense begin. Shuffler is fine. It's fine, everybody. There's nothing rigged about this heinous piece of garbage shuffler. All right. Um, there's no way you keeping that many tap lands is right. This is a lot better, so I can't be salty. Oh my gosh, somebody's not playing rogues. So far, I've only played Rogue Mirrors today. All right, we give them a Sentinel's Eyes. It's nice to see some escape cards just packed in. Labyrinth of Scophos. Okay. Someone's got a brew. Let's see if it's a good one. Can they keep me off into the story with Sentinel's Eyes? It's going to be hard to do if their first play is a Maze Mind Tome, not a creature. Ho oh, ho, baby. Oh, man. That's a lot of mill. Vanishing Light, Luminarch Aspirant, Angelic Ascension. There's some something weird going on here. Skyclave Apparition. They didn't scry with the Tome. Here's a Banishing Light. One of the Thought Thieves is going to take a vacation into the darkness. Into the light, I guess I should say. That won't stop Into the Story from happening. I think I can play it on their turn. They're, they're freaking mono white, so... We'll at least make them think about playing around counter magic a little bit. Ooh, that's a lot of Skyclave Apparitions. Three of them in the graveyard. What flavor of Mono White is this? Scry to the top. This is two cards. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get Sentinel's Eyes to uh, shut down these, these rogues and their milling ways. All right, here's Luminarch, opponent's first creature to the board. And Tome will draw. Let's rev up. Oh my goodness. All right, play a blue. Blood Chiefs thirst this guy. Out of there. I don't think I should expect the opponent to play a creature and I get to use Essence Scatter. They might play Yorian, but that doesn't do much for them. So I'm going to buy the Lurus instead of hold up the mana. I'm going to try to get us in position for Agadine's Awakening if they do kill everything. But it looks like... I don't know, some kind of mono-white Yorian? 
with some interesting card choices. Elspeth. This game is going to turn into an example of why just playing some escape cards doesn't beat rogues. You still have to actually kill the creatures. In fact, you probably have to exile them because of what Luris does. Yeah, you can bring out that Sentinel's Eyes. You can put it on a token. That's something. I don't even know if I'm attacking Elspeth. It can minus three for five life, but then they just kind of throw it away. Doesn't mean much. Crab off the top. Do I even want to kill the Elspeth? I should just go face. I guess they have four life from the Tome as well. Maybe mill winning by mill is still the most likely outcome. I don't want to get my Luris banished. All right. Well, the opponent can just escape back the Elspeth, but that's their whole turn, and that's a lot of mana. Here's a crab. Here's a swamp. I think we play the Luris, but I think we hold up the Heartless Act or the Essence Scatter. If the opponent tries to exile the Luris, we'll kill it with the Heartless Act, send it to Graveyard, and get it back with the Awakening. And then next turn, we can start Wind Robbing. Yep. Not exactly the way I wanted things to go. Oh, I probably should have drawn first with the robber. I might have hit a drown in the lock. So what is this getting back? Skyclave Apparition, probably. Okay. Opponent's finally mounting a little bit of aggression. Go, crap, go. Okay, Castle Lock Thwain off the top. Mill you? What do the Selfless Saviors protect? It's a very strange white deck. Let's draw. Thought Thief. Noise. We need a blue left over. So that we can double wind rob. Since Luris entered the battlefield, we can pitch this now, draw a card, replay it. Mole Mage's Domination. Curious to see what that ends up grabbing. Now the opponent takes that scry. I assume they now know that they need another solution to Luris. They keep on top. Okay, it's going to be one of those days. Another Crawling Barons. Heliod? Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. We're a life gain deck now, boys. And girls and peoples. 
all this, and it was always a hidden life gain deck. Well, it's going to get milled. <laughs> so if this remains a creature, we could steal it. Okay. Lifelink over there. Got it. I, the Wind Robber can just take this block, though. Speaker. You've got a long way to go for that to get there. No life for you. Couple of lands off the top. Ugh. So first things first, we want you back. The Loris is about to get exiled, I think, by the Skyclave Apparition. If we steal the Heliod, we can attack with it. Put a counter on something else, but then it dies to this. <laughs> Daxos. All this, and it turned out to be a life gain deck. I'm still, I'm still in a bit of shock. 17 cards. Does stealing the Heliod do a lot? I, I think it does. We don't get to play the other Thought Thief this turn. I guess that's okay. Now there's the ECD tax. Yep. So we've got enough here. But I'll take that. Get two more cards here. No, oh, we don't have white mana. We can't give things lifelink anyway. We would need another way to gain life. Once Luris is gone, that's probably not happening. But we kept Heliod away from the opponent, who is obviously has a deck that's trying to use it. So, no huge regrets. Yep. Goodbye, Luris. You served us well. You drew us some cards. Fourteen cards left. We've got a mill of six a turn. This is eight. So, yeah. We need two turns. We're at seventeen. Our opponent's starting to get a lot of power together. Like, Elspeth can punch. Oof, oof. Yeah, we don't need the Wind Robber to attack to get to mill lethal, so the Wind Robber can chump and draw. Believe in yourself as I believe in you. So, since we don't worry about life total too much, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's like really close to life lethal, but then you have to remember they're attacking with this lifelink creature, they have this that they can minus for life. So we'll just focus on damage. And block the thing that hits the hardest. Ooh. Into the story. Fable Passage. All right, let's start with the story. Because if we draw another rune crab, I think we're just done here. Okay, no rune crab. Do we have the mana to take another shot at it? I think so. Thieves Guild Enforcer, is that good enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen. Okay. We still have to have an island in our graveyard or in our library sorry angel of destiny hitting the bin by the way spicy good 
gonna get there. Should have played a Yorian deck. Look at all this blinkable stuff. Should have played a Yorian deck. Milwin Khan assembled! Two cards to spare. Double Thieves Guild Enforcer with no blue mana. Content keep. We'll draw it. We're whitelisted. We don't have anything to worry about. This is Mono Red. Tycoon Bush pl Tycoon Bosch plays Mono Red every month ever. I have seen them before. But they are Phoenix of Ash Mono Red, so they came prepared. All right, the next draw step's a big one since we drew a black land, not a blue one. <laughs> Tilted them into oblivion. Ah! So close. All right, let's go Thought Thieves. We need to draw a crab. Crab would be good. Awakening! Oh, who is that? That's Mono Red. Who that? Fervent Champion. Let's see if they react. Nom? Got him. Yeah, no Rimrock Knight here. Ah, you can you can feel their hatred swelling up inside them. It's beautiful in a way. All right, let's get some cards in their graveyard. Oh, did you need those lands? Let's find out. <laughs> nah, no problem. Phoenix of Ash, no attack. That's weird. That's a little odd, isn't it? So we want to save this to kill the Phoenix when we're attacking in. I guess we can attack with both, but then we miss a mill trigger. Do we expect to win this game by milling the opponent, though? Not really. I'd rather surprise them. But they're not going to block anyway. So we'll take the mill triggers. Take eight. So if I'm the opponent and I have a land, I might block that with Phoenix of Ash to get it in the graveyard, bring it back as a 3-3 to block this. But maybe they have a different plan. Hardened in the forge, you're, you're just dead. Yeah, you're just... Okay, they've given up on life. <laughs> they, they have uh, absolutely given up on life. <laughs> Red Mage didn't even attack with the ground creature. <laughs> oh my gosh, that people hate rogues. This hand looks fun. Just, just fun. But the opponent could run it over. It's possible. Like, it takes a few turns of setup and then these cards take over, but... Well then. I don't know what that is. Let's let's find out. Thornwood Falls. Merc Water Pathway. Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Rank number 127. Is this a shrine deck I see? Indeed. Indeed it is. Oh, baby. Yugi boy, have you broken the meta? We've got those sweet gain lands. So we play the tap land. We've got the Thought Thief, but we're going to hold up Drown in the Lock to counter the next Shrine or the Board Wipe, whatever the opponent plays here. 
just try to get way too far ahead of them. I, I feel a little bad for ruining this run to top 100 for a Shrines player. Assuming we win this. But not bad enough. This is combat, gentlemen. There's no points for second place. Rune Crab, Wind Robber, Thought Thief, Overdrive! How dare you use JoJo while playing rogues? Have you absolutely no, no morality? Accurate, there's none. Quite accurate. <laughs> hmm. I think we just keep leaning in into him. Just mill them as much as we can, hit them as much as we can. If they sweep the board this time, we reload with Into the Story, Luris, and Wind Robber. Twenty-three cards left. They've got to sweep again. They don't have time to play a shrine. They play Sanctum of All. Alright, let's see if it can bring them home. Is it all it was meant to be? They fetch. There's still only 23 cards in that library. We need to hit the land drop for the crab. So, um, I don't have anything to play though with two blue. I guess we could try drawing with the wind robber, but I don't think it's worth it. So I think this is a triome. All right. I know it. I know you're rooting for shrines, aren't you? You're rooting for shrines at home. Go ahead, stand up. Send them your energy. Help them get out of this. Red Sanctum. Stone Fangs down to 13. Kills a Thought Thief. Thoris just gets it back. Kills a crab. Okay. One more card to discard, possibly? Yep. Another Thought Thief. Down to just a Wind Robber. The opponent doing all that they can here. That Fable Passage is brutal. So, let's have a look at the Shrine deck that got so close to top 100 Mythic. We got some Blood Cheese Thirst, Thirst for Meaning, Extinction Events. Not that much control elements, to be honest. It's mostly the Shrines and a few Sweepers and Removal Spells. And some card draw from Thirst. And that's it. That's it. A ton of land. A ton of like triomes we've got gain lands i thought for a minute the opponent was like on a ton of gain lands but it looks like they're just one of each oh dismal backwaters there's multiples there tranquil cove there's multiples there one one caves one wind scar wind scarred crag one thornwood falls all right down to nine they got sanctum here it's gonna draw them cards. Down to one. So if they extinction event, get rid of the board. Okay, they go for the Luris. Yep. 
Unfortunately, the Awakening will will beat them with Luris getting back Crab, getting back uh, hitting Land Drop. Oh, they're going to exile it. Never mind. There's still a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. All right, this is it. We can still get back the Luris, but we can't mill them. They've exiled all the mill cons. So do we use the castle? No, the Luris gets another draw with the wind robber anyway. <laughs> Never doubted you for a second. Never doubted you for a second. Classic rogues. We can send some hearts. And the last card was another extinction event. Ouch. Ouchie, ouch. It's a hand. It'll work. Yorian. Not mono red Yorian. Strictly a misplay. Strictly worse. This can be a tough matchup for the Yorian deck, but I mean, it's everything about the matchup is hard. Every play you make, you gotta think it through into the story. Okay. It's going to be all about getting some cards in that graveyard. Planes for the opponent. All right. Life from the Cove. Love to see the blue-white player. I was going to say I need to draw a crab so I can of one mind here. And now I can. Should have drawn the two first. All right, let's see if the opponent can deal with both of these, maybe with a Shatter the Sky here. Casket. If they only deal with one, though, then Into the Story turns on. So cross your fingers. There we go. Hold these for future crabs. Brazen Borrower. That'll be something to keep an eye out for. Resolve it now before the opponent untaps. Still no drown in the locks, so we're going to have to keep pressure on our foe as much as possible. There's a Skyclave Apparition. We're starting to get to the heart of the game. Like, it's laying the opponent's Yorian's resolve will be brutal if, if we have to do that, so we need to find a way to counter those. And we can keep pressure on their library. That's nice to see. Fifty-two cards to go. Milling out Yorian. It's hard. But somebody's gotta do it. They play the tome. Scry to the top, we'll see about that. Hmm. <gasps> nice. Alright, do we check them for a counter spell? I don't see any counters so far in what we've milled. We could also play the Thieves Guild Enforcer and blow up the Skyclave Apparition and put pressure on their life total. I think I like that plan a lot better. I know the wall cuts off the 2-2 quite a bit, but not the Thieves Guild Enforcer. They do have a neutralize. Okay, love to see that. Love to see that. Let's see if we draw another crab. Of one mind, Merfolk Wind Robber. We 
don't have a human lined up. So I guess we're playing of one mind. No, we can't. I guess we're playing the wind robber then. Or we could represent Drown in the lock, which we still haven't found. I, that's probably better than just playing a wind robber. We can do that next turn. Yeah, holding Fable Passage representing that we have a counter. The opponent will probably play something, but they might not play what they want to play, you know? They might not play the Yorian itself. Almost halfway through the deck, no drown in the locks, so the opponent's got to be expecting one. And look at that. They're going to sit tight. You love to see it. Fetch now, thin deck. Last swamp, by the way. No more basics. What now? Seven. We could buy the Luris, say go, but we'd have to discard, which is not great. Play this. And try to try to get into the story cast at some point. I'm just gonna hold this back. Omen of the Sun is a card. So is Brazen Borrower. Posture, posture, posture. That feeling when they tap out <laughs> and you just cast an into the story. All right, so we have to discard two cards. They can be land. We have enough land, more than we're going to need this game. And we continue to represent a drown in the lock. Opponent's going to buy that Yorian and go for it at some point. They go for Shark Typhoon. Well, this is going to get hairy. They don't have that many cards left. Let's see if we draw the Drown. They might have a Negate or a Mystical Dispute as well, but we don't draw the Drown, so... Definitely a show of weakness, but what can we do? Forty cards. Let's see if we can get there. <laughs> You're late. You are late. Rune crab. Then we'll hit our land drop. Mill them some more. And they scoop. Okay. Well. When you're the control deck and your opponent has eight cards in hand and you have one, I suppose hope doesn't exactly feel like a strategy. The question now, will this hand draw a human? Let's find out. Seems exciting. Up against Yorian. Brother, but not my brother right now. Sworn enemy. All right, come on, off the top. S Soaring Thought Thief. How, how did he do it? How does he do it? That's what it means to be the one in best of one. Mill your dream trawler. All right, and away we go. Okay, they forgot to kill my stuff. We could play the crab. <clears throat> I'd rather play of one. Of one mind. But I don't know. We have Drown in the lock. We could protect this board state. 
Well, let's start with the attack. Alright, so they do play Negate. We hit two of them in the 80 card deck. I don't think they have another then. Let's take our time. Nothing. No activity. They might have a baby shark typhoon. We're going to get them up to eight, so if they do, we can cycle the wind robber for a card if they want to trade that. I don't think they do. Hit. Hit. All right. Of one mind. One mana draw two for the aggro deck. Negate? They did have a negate? Okay. We let that go. So that we can into the story them later. Look at all the card draw. It's it's relentless. Absolutely relentless that the aggro decks have so much card draw. Um, let's fight. Or not. No fight was had. Which means into the story is good. I think it means into the story is good. Yeah, they could have a neutralize. We'll fire it off now. Whew. Woof. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I Hedron love this. I also love their blue white Yorian deck. Feel kind of bad about what had to happen to it here today. You have to have Glimpse of Freedom. That's what I discovered. Mill you. Mill you. Does look incredibly like... Like, it, it really looks like the list. Right up to the cakes on the brain. It looks like the list I played in the uh, tournaments earlier in the format. It's hard. It's hard, guys. It's hard to have to fight something I love. In fact, I'm playing the other side of the best match I ever had, which was uh, me and Preddy in our epic series. We played three matches in that tournament. That's fun. Want my Wind Waba? You must have a plan to Yori in that. Because you want the empty casket. Or you just, you know, you feel good. You got 48 cards in your deck. What could go wrong? I will play the Th Thieves Guild Enforcer. Hatred. We have hatred in our hearts for the Thieves Guild Enforcer. I actually think that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll find another way, you know? Mill you. Trawlers in the bin. Let's have a Lurry and say go. We can play Luris, get back Enforcer, then of one mind. Yep, that's fine too. Crab did its job. Now you buy Yorian. Okay, here we go. Might be an Elspeth Conqueror's death from the opponent. That would make some sense. 
Let's go for the library here. Draw two. See if we find a swamp. Yep. So we can still hold up Drown in the Lock. Ah, Seagate Restoration. So much of my heart in this deck. So I think we hit all the negates. One, two, three, four. They would need a Mystical Dispute. Okay, Omen of the Sea. They scared me. They did scare me. We untap with Luris. What a brutal world. And another counter up our sleeve. This one's over. It's just about how much torture we can inflict on the way. Thirty-two cards. Still a long way to go. Those Yori index, man. They do make it a difficult climb. On the vile wings and bloody wind, the swarm will rise. Give him the dance. Give him the love. Flex. <laughs> Flex harder. <laughs> oh, man. Best wishes, stinky trousers. I'm the worst, but I am playing the villain today. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. Is Rogues the best deck in Standard? Is it the best deck in Best of One Standard? The win rates and the level of play seem to contribute a lot. Really good players get everything out of Rogues. Medium to kind of one-sided players who either only play it as control or only play it as aggression don't seem to perform the same way. At the highest levels, Rogues' win rate goes up. The further down you go, the more they're victimized by escape cards and people who don't know how to mess with them. The bottom line is whether or not Rogues is the best deck really isn't the question you need to ask. What you need to know is the Rogues the best deck for you. And if it is, don't be turned off by all those whiny complainy pants who scoop on turn two when you play your rune crabs. Like you're allowed to play the decks you want to play. Go out there and get them. Show them the meaning of pain. And, you know, strike hard, no mercy. On the other hand, if you really will never play rogues, never, I'll never join you, and you want to beat rogues, then you need to pack answers for them, and it needs to go a little further than the escape cards themselves. The escape creatures are okay, but escape spells can't be stolen by Lull Mage's domination. When you combine card advantage, cheap removal, and cards like Glimpse of Freedom and Cling to Dust, then the opponent will have a hard time keeping your graveyard full, and they'll have a very hard time managing the battlefield. For me, I like defeating rogues with an, an off-color, an off -color, weird, out-of-the-blue, non-conventional strategy of playing more than 60 cards and playing Yorian. It's been a long time since I got milled by a rune crab, my friends. If you're sick of it, consider it. Also, if you're an aggro mage, what are you doing here? Just kidding. I, I, do have a, I do have something for you. If you're an aggro mage trying to beat rogues, you need a very high creature count, and you need haste creatures. I think haste creatures, or something like Winota that produce pseudo-haste creatures, are the keys to beating rogues, because giving them time lets them draw cards and remove stuff. Keeping them under pressure, especially with the likes of Questing Beast, that'll get them dead. And don't worry. I've got a build of gruel ready to do just that. What do you think of that, Ember Cleave, in the corner? Let's zoom out. Are you still over there? Yes. Yes, little girl. Do you want to get aggro? Do you want to double strike and trample the rogues? She does. It's hard to tell right now, but she really does. So stay tuned for that. Cool Kids Club plug at the end. Thank you for being here. You watched the whole video. You. Yes, you, you're cool. Don't let anyone tell you different. 
And a place where Cool Kids cl Club members can hang out and have a good time is on Twitch with me, CGB, where I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 4 p.m. Eastern to 6 p.m.-ish Pacific. I always try to find a good launching off point. Sometimes it's at 6, 6.30, whatever it is. And yeah, it's fun. If you haven't been to Twitch before, it might seem a little weird. The chat isn't really what you use YouTube comments for. It's more of a collective get together and party while watching this. So remember, if you're joining Twitch for the first time, hang out. Everybody's actually pretty nice and uh, kind of read the room a little bit. I think the most common turnoff for a YouTuber is they go to Twitch, they join in the middle of my stream, they type a long question or they type a long paragraph in chat and it's like, Oh my God, CGV, really cool to see you. I've been watching your videos for a while. What do you think of Boros Outlaws Merriment Control in standard after rotation? And the thing that they miss is that I'm playing a game right now and there's also a bunch of other people who have questions. So what's most likely to happen to that person is one, I'm not going to answer their question. I'm going to finish the game. And two, Somebody in chat might make what's called a copy pasta, just copy it and spam it over and over. They're actually trying to help you. They want me to read it and answer the question, but they're also poking a little fun at you for thinking that Twitch is a, like using Twitch like a monologue and Q&A session where it really isn't that. It's, it is more of a crowd uh, atmosphere, not a person raise your hand, get your question answered atmosphere. And I, I hope that helps explain some of the things about Twitch culture. We get a lot of first time Twitch users because of traffic from YouTube. And I feel bad that I can't take the time to explain to them all the time why I can't stop what I'm doing and answer all the questions. But it's the way it goes. And it actually is a really fun group and we have a lot of fun. So cool kids, check out Twitch, link in the description. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Oh, other cool thing about Twitch, more Emmy, more Emmy. You get more Emmy cam. Goodbye.